Hey, this is Kev with Blender Binge. In this quick and dirty video, we're going to show you how to cut up an image or matte painting and fly a camera into it so it gets parallax and stuff. Let's go. First, we zero out the camera and face it down the Y axis. Good. Now, let's scale the camera up. This just extends out the fulcrum and gives us guides for the next few steps. Now, let's add in some cards that we'll project our image onto. This is similar to what people do in much more expensive programs, but I'm like YouTube broke because I'm not among the Blender chosen ones, so we get this. Create a grid. I like this because it's subdivided already and will help us later. Go into shading and build this shader. You'll want a mix shader with an emission shader plugged into the bottom and a transmission shader plugged into the top. We could use the principal shader, but nah, this works really well right now. Then, make absolutely sure you go to the texture tab and change it to alpha blend. We're using alpha blend here. This makes sure it just renders what we want while leaving everything else transparent. It's for Eevee. You can turn on motion blur here too if you want. Here's where I hope you have Node Wrangler installed, because you can just select the emission shader and hit Control T. You get all this cool hooky uppy thingies for free. Now we add in our images. So let me explain what I did to get these images. I took this image right here, a nice one off pixabay.com that says I can use it for commercial purposes. I then took it into Photoshop, but GIMP works too, and so does probably like MS Paint and all whatever. I cut out the background, midground, spiky mountain, and middle, and the foreground, and saved each one out as a separate image with an alpha channel. You'd probably want the highest resolution image you can get. This was a JPEG, so whatever. <laughs> I also feathered out the edges a bit and let them blend more. After I cut them up, I went in and cloned the background a bit to fill it in so when the camera moves later, it looks not dumb. <laughs> now that you fully understand what I did, we'll add in these images. So I add in the image, then flip the image up and move it into the camera fulcrum. I go into camera view and stretch this thing out to the edges. I'm not concerned with super accuracy in this video, it's just showing you how you can do this too. Once that one is in, duplicate it and move it forward a bit, scaling roughly to the size of the fulcrum. Then, duplicate the shader and add the new one to the new image plane. This will allow us to add in a totally new image without messing up the older ones. Position this new one, then do the same for all our images. Then, we just adjust it to our liking, because it's ours, you know? And like, no one's the boss of us. You can guesstimate the distances here if you don't know them, or you can use FSpy, which is beyond the scope of this particular video. Here's where it gets really cool. Subdivide your foreground plane and go into sculpting mode. Now pull and push out some fake rock volume. Mine goes to 11. This will make it look better when we push our camera in later. Let's do this with a whole bunch of stuff. Now it looks cooler or, or crappier. I, 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 can't t I can't tell. Stop, stop judging me. It's, it's too much pressure. Now we have something cool. Let's break this out into collections and view layers so that each plane is in its own collection and view layer. This will help us comp later. You want to name each collection and each view layer. Then move each piece into its respective collection. Once you do this, each view layer gets something turned on and everything else turned off. You can go in and select what you don't want inside a view layer and hit E. That excludes it from the view layer. You'll see why we do this when we get into comping in a minute. Do some test renders and ew. We, we need to go to film and enable transparent. Now it's transparent. So set some keyframes on the camera and let's render this out as a multi-layer EXR into some folder that we'll remember later. Once that's finished cooking, go to the compositing workspace and hit use nodes. This shows us our render layers connected to a composite out node. We can't see anything, so we need to add in a viewer node. Hook the output of the render layers node to the viewer node, and now we see something. If you have the viewer node selected, you can move it around and scale it to your liking. Let's add in an image sequence node and call in our EXR files that we just rendered. Hook that one up to the viewer. Now we see that one. Make sure it's set to background or whatever your background is named. Duplicate that node and go to the layer dropdown. This lists our layers. Remember what we set up before with the view layers? Here's where we see it. Now we just need to add in an alpha over node and plug in the next layer from the background into the top yellow image spot. This puts the midground on top of the background. If we do this a few more times in the right order, we get a full composite of all our layers. Then we can just hit the little arrows on the nodes to collapse them and get them out of the way. Now we can add in a color balance node and color grade this thing to our liking. I made mine warm. Now we can add in a glare node and see what it looks like. Ooh, now we can add in some fog too if we want. Eevee is super fast at this, so we can create a box, give it a principled volume shader, and add noise texture to control the density. Make sure the texture coordinate is set to object, plug in a color ramp, play with the values, add in a light and place it where the sun is in the image, keyframe the rotation channels just a smidge, and marvel at your masterpiece. I have a whole video on this technique here if you want. Now, Render that out as its own view layer and name. I gave it its own name in the render output and made it a .png so as to not confuse it with the other image sequence. You just need to turn off all the other view layers and uncheck anything inside them so it just renders the fog. Also, make sure the render layer is set to fog. Render this out and bring it in. Use an alpha over node over everything before the color balance. Then bring down the factor because this thing isn't being occluded by anything in this video as that would take more time to set up. 
plug the comp back into the composite node, render the sequence back out as an MP4 or whatever, and there you go. A nice establishing shot with parallax and some geometry, all made off of one single image you found on the web without needing to use any camera mapping yet. Talk to you in the next one. See ya.